Hey, I'm Stephanie Rubitz. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am answering your questions on how to use a rolled hem foot. Ooh, it has been a while since we've been here and I am so happy to be back. I know uh, about six months ago or so, something like that, I did a video saying that I was ready to come back. Um, and that six month hiatus just kind of turned into a year. It was a big year. <laughs> All of the things changed pretty much, um, but now I'm I have a new routine with the new job. I've I've trained at the new job, so my brain is not like exploding all the time, and I'm ready to come back and start making videos. I've been missing this so much, and thanks to everybody who reached out in the comment section or through Instagram just to like check in and see how I'm doing. I'm doing great. <laughs> I just it was a lot. And I'm sure with everything that's going on in the world, there's probably a lot of you who understand and have been through a lot in the last couple of years too. So I just needed the time and now I've had it and I'm ready to get going. So I am gonna be doing posts every two weeks and I thought it would be fitting if my first post back would be answering questions about the rolled hem foot because if you are somebody who has subscribed to my channel in the last maybe like two years, there's a pretty good chance that this is the video that brought you here. Now I always do my best to try and answer questions in the comment section as best as I can, but as you can well imagine, it's really hard to come up sometimes with answers that I can just like type out succinctly in a comment section. And I always try to, um, but then I'm always kind of wondering, I'm like, God, I wonder if that like really helped the person <laughs> if they understood what I was getting at, because it's so hard when you can't just show somebody. So what I did is I went back through that video and um, I wrote out all the most common questions because chances are if one person has a question, other people do. And then maybe if I can pair this with my first video, people who are coming to see that video now, then they can watch this video and have those questions answered immediately and not have to scroll through all of those questions. Okay, so first let's go through a couple of quick questions that don't depend so much on demo and then we'll get to the demo questions. First question is um, tips for working with slippery fabric. One thing that I do find really helpful is my sewing machine is a quilting machine and it came with this um, like quilting table that actually just like clips onto my machine. And why I find this helpful is because since you have a larger surface for your fabric, sorry, that was really loud. Because you have a larger surface for your fabric to lay on, gravity isn't immediately trying to pull it off of your machine. Just having more surface area that is on the same plane as your actual presser foot and needle, um, I just find helps it not slide around so much. Okay, does the rolled hem foot differ on different machines? And then I had like another question that I think is actually kind of um, sort of the same question and that's how it attaches. So. If you have an older machine, so for my like uh, 1970s Kenmore, um, the foot is all in one piece. So you actually have to screw on and off the foot every time you change your foot, okay? So if you were looking for a rolled hem foot for an older machine, this might be, you might be needing a one piece. However, this is the foot that came on, or the adapter, that came on my newer Janome. And so there is the whole apparatus there, but there's a little button at the back. And when you push that button, that's when your foot can clip on and off. Now, if you're ordering sewing machine feet from Amazon or wherever, or maybe, maybe you're even treating yourself to one of these big kits, that's the kind of foot that you're gonna get. But do not despair because you can get these little adapters for pretty much any machine. Um, I wonder actually if this would I think that would probably, yeah. So the grooves for the the post that your foot fits on are the same size. So I theoretically, but I've never tried it, should be able to take this off of my Janome and put it on my old Kenmore. So um, that's, that's a possibility. Don't feel like if you've got an older machine, like you can't play with all these newfangled feet that are out there. You absolutely can, you just need the adapter. Um, and so that is exactly how I put my foot on and off. I push the button to get my whatever foot I had on there off. Then you let go of the button 
And then I usually just slide this part underneath and then I lower my foot. And there you go, it just clicks on. Super easy. Next question, why does the hem change sizes? If your hem is changing sizes, and I'm assuming what you're meaning is you're starting off with the size that you mean to start off with and then it goes tinier and tinier and tinier and tinier and tinier, and tinier until there's no rolled hem left. Um, if you look at my first video and it talks about how the fabric has to roll around the cone and then it has to run next to the bar that is in the bottom of the foot. If you don't have it running next to that bar, if the fabric is slid under there at all, that's what's going to happen. That is the one thing that like a lot of people don't talk about when using rolled hem feet is having, and probably because it's so dang hard to actually show you <laughs> on video where that bar is. I don't know if I can even, this is a new camera. Um, okay, so there, you see the cone. And then there's like this part that comes up and around and down. So that part that comes down, that is the bar that I'm talking about. So the edge of your fabric needs to be rubbing on that. If it's underneath that bar at all, yeah, your hem's gonna change sizes until eventually it turns into nothing. Can I use on a circle skirt? Yes, 100%. Um, that is one of the most common uses that I can think of for a rolled hem. Part of the reason being, not just because there's often delicate, more floaty fabrics, um, but because when you have a rounded hem, the length of your fabric right on the outside of the hem is that little bit longer than say like an inch in. And so if you're doing like, an inch and a half hem on a circle skirt, then you will end up having to go around the outside of the skirt with a basting stitch so that you can ease that up. Otherwise, when you roll that hem, your your fabric that's getting rolled in is longer than, than where it's being tacked down. So with a rolled hem, you're just rolling such a very small amount of fabric that that doesn't really, you don't really have to worry about it. It just kind of, gets taken up in the hem and you're fine. So yeah, 100%. Anything like um, originally when I did my last video on this a couple years ago was for my Christmas dress um, and I was doing a flounce, which it, it the whole flounce is made of essentially a big curve and then it's sewn straight. So yeah, it worked great, 100%. Now there's a couple that are just gonna be easier Oh, I gotta put my foot back on here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that this little swatch here is actually a wonderful, beautiful, voluminous circle skirt. We started sewing our circle skirt right here. We've gone down and all the way around and we've come up the other side. So now I have about an inch of space that I have not hemmed. It, with an inch left, even the most ornery of fabrics that do not want to curl and want to remain laying flat, um, when there's only an inch and it's tacked on either side, it's really gonna still hold that shape. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave your needle down, pull your foot up, and just pull it out and you can see only the needle is in there. It's not in the cone of the foot at all. And then all I'm going to do is put my foot back down and I'm going to sew until I join up both my ends. And there you go. That's how you're going to complete your rolled hem once you get all the way around that circle skirt. All right, now another question I had is how do you uh, turn corners? <laughs> Now, I, okay, I'm, I'm all right with a rolled hem. I gotta admit, doing corners with a rolled hem foot is its own special kind of hell. All right, so I have a sample uh, started in the machine here. I'm gonna come up to this corner. There's a few ways to do this. I think one of the things that people want to be able to do is they want to have it go continuously um, without sort of stopping on one edge just like come around and sew um, without having to stop and reposition and start again. It can be done, um, but you actually don't have as nice of a finish. And when I look at commercially produced napkins and hankies and stuff like that, 
um, the ones that I have anyways, the seam gets sewn all the way and then rolled and then sewn all the way from the other way. Because what that does is it tacks your fabric, like your roll down the whole way. If you sew down only to your roll and then turn the corner and follow your roll, you end up with like this weird sort of puff ball in this corner that doesn't end up having a stitch to keep it laying flat. So in my opinion, for me, there's kind of two best options here. There is to just sew right off the edge and then start over again, going the other way. Or you, if you really want to, you can roll the bottom and sew over that roll. Either way will work. I prefer to go all the way off the edge and then start again for a couple of reasons. And also there is a little tricky thing. So let's just finish this side of the roll. Now what becomes really tricky here is the fact that you're coming off of three layers of fabric onto one layer of fabric. And so what's gonna happen here is you've got the back of your foot is gonna be on this roll, which is three layers of fabric. This corner has six layers of fabric, and then this side has three layers of fabric. So you, your foot has most of its pressure is going to be on this corner. It's not going to have even pressure. Now, if you've sewn jeans or anything like that, you may have used something like this. What this is meant to mimic is the thickness of this is meant to be about the thickness of three to four layers of denim. Um, and then you would slide this under your presser foot and it would help give even pressure onto your fabric um, while you're coming off of like a denim hem. Now this is too thick to use for this because this is not denim. But what I do have is I do have a piece of cardboard. It's from a cracker box, it's folded in half and this is gonna help us out a lot. I'm going to roll the first little bit, just like I would if I were just starting a regular seam. And one of the reasons why I like to come all the way off one side and then start fresh on the corner is then I also have my thread tails that I can use to help pull this through as well. So I'm gonna line this up. I'm gonna put my needle down. And then I'm going to put my piece of cardboard in so that it's like filling in this space where there's no tripled up roll of fabric. So now my presser foot is level and it's giving even pressure to all of my fabric. So between this and between being able to pull my tails, I should be able to get this started pretty easy. going fairly slow so I can just make sure everything's going good. So there we go. I have the first few stitches in. I have my needle down so I'm lifting my foot. I can take the cardboard away now because I'm past this first roll and that really thick corner and now I can go ahead and put my fabric into the roll. Which is not super easy with the camera here I gotta admit. <laughs> okay let's see if I did it. <laughs> And there we go, that is our corner. So I would pull that thread through and knot it. Because I have this seam going all the way to the end, um, that's gonna keep that corner really nice and crisp and keep it from sort of having a bubble in it. Now I did have somebody ask specifically about doing the little ends on a an apron strap. I'm gonna be honest, if it were me, <laughs> I would roll the two long sides and then I would just roll the end and put it under the foot and stitch it. I would not ever even try for that, for a short span to even get it into the rolled hem foot. Oh, by the way, uh, if you're hanging out here with me, if you don't mind, just like give the video a like, that really, really helps my channel. Thanks so much. So I'm sure the lighting change was really jarring just there. I apologize for that. Uh, I realized while I was editing this video that I completely forgot to record one of the most important tips. It was on the list. I don't know how I missed it. And now I'm recording this on a different day 
it is not as hot as Satan's armpit, which means I can have my blinds open. So sorry if that was startling to you, but we need to talk about how to roll hem over a seam. Um, so there's a couple little tricks that can help you with this. So I have my little sample fabric here. You can see I have my seam and I'm just gonna cut the corner off of my seam allowance. I'm not going too close to my seam, obviously, because I don't wanna risk uh, weakening that. And I'm just gonna snip a little bit off. You can see it's about, um, I'm going up about a centimeter, maybe half an inch. You don't wanna go too far because you don't wanna risk having it so steep that you then have a raw edge. You want everything to still look nice and tucked in and have all of your edges be secure. So now let's take this to the machine. We're gonna um, open this up and press the seam open. Since this is just an example, I'm just gonna finger press it because it's quilting cotton and I can get away with it. But that's what it looks like when the seam is open. Um, and now I'm gonna get that into my rolled hem foot and we'll take a look at that going through the machine because there is a little tricky part to that too. Okay, so I've got it all loaded into the machine. You can see I'm coming up to my seam right here. Now, as always, I'm gonna just kinda pre-roll before I get to it. Okay, here's where things get a little dicey. Slow down, take your time, okay? Your seam allowance can get caught on the foot and then it will bunch up and you'll have a whole great big mess. So I kinda just slow down and I do one stitch at a time and then usually I need to bring my foot up and down just to make sure that my foot is on top of that seam allowance. shot I am in the shot there we go there we go that is what it looks like so you have a nice clean seam um, and your seam allowance is all tucked in but you don't have any of that extra bulk inside the roll there was one other question um, that I got asked that I should probably address and somebody asked you know if you just can't get the hang of the rolled hem foot can I just roll it by hand pin it a whole bunch press it and then put it through the machine and yeah you know, you could, but um, I honestly, to me, that's more trouble than it's worth because number one, you're going to use all of the pins, just all of them. And if it's a great big skirt that you're doing, as you're moving the skirt around to get it under the machine, you're going to end up dropping pins. Like they're just going to wiggle their way out of the fabric. And especially if you have carpet, you know, you're going to find them with your feet. It's not gonna be nice. And to me, if you're going to go through all the trouble of, you know, really rolling it by hand, then why not just do your rolled hem by hand and sew it by hand? I think oftentimes when we have a hard time getting the hang of something with a sewing machine, um, and then we think, well, we'll just do it by hand. Like that can feel like a failure. Like, oh, I can't do it by machine. So I guess I'll do it by hand. But Let's remember that everything that we do with the machine, all the, the, no matter how many bells and whistles there are, no matter how many cool gadgets and cool feet that you have for it, the main thing with a sewing machine is it is designed to do everything that we have been doing impeccably by hand for generations, only faster. There's no shame in saying, enough of this, <laughs> I'm not doing this and I'm just gonna do it by hand. So if you want a video on how to do a really good rolled hem, let me know. I'm happy to make that video for you because you know what? Everybody has their thing and everybody has a thing that's not their thing, okay? For me, um, and I have a video coming up on this actually, I cannot top stitch a straight line. Can't do it. Um, so I have to use guided feet. I have to find a workaround and I like to sew jeans, so having good top stitching is kind of a thing for jeans. So it's really about finding what works for you. If you get through these two videos and you're still like, not rolled hem foot, not for me, that's okay. You don't have to use a rolled hem foot and don't feel like, you know, you failed at it or you're not a good sewer or, or any of that nonsense. Um, do it in whatever way works best for you, okay? That's all I have for you this week. I will see you in two weeks. Um, these videos are gonna be coming bi-weekly now. 
And yeah, that's all I got. So we'll see you next time.